Okay, Marta. So today we have uh, Marta Riboru, and she will tell us about PT symmetric Hamiltonians at finite temperature. So, and you can see where she's from, etc. So, Marta, whenever you're ready, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Hello to everybody. Uh, I want to thank the organizer for letting me share this work uh, at these meetings. And uh, the focus of the work is to study Hamiltonian model by uh, system model by better symmetric Hamiltonians, but now at finite temperature. And we had like some results on what happens on the non pt, -PT symmetry phase. Let us start by uh, propose the, what we shall do uh, along the talk. First, we shall, I shall present the general problem, and then I, we shall make some application to the Sonsu model because uh, though uh, it is one of the most simplest to treat mathematically, it still has a rich uh, physics. Then I shall draw some conclusions. Well, uh, the problem uh, we want to solve is this, we have a system in an environment, but now the environment is at finite temperature T. So uh, we propose to look at uh, what happens to the system through a non hermitian Hamiltonian, an effective non hermitian Hamiltonian. But now, at temperature, at finite temperature, particularly at the initial, the initial condition is that the system is in equilibrium. Uh, to do so, I shall use the double time temperature dependent grid tension formalism, which has been uh, proposed there in the 1950. And I, I learned about this formalism was I was making my PhD through a very nice book of Phil Terhar on statistical mechanics. Let us briefly uh, see what is essential of the formalism. First, uh, we shall uh, say, as usual, that the time evolution of an operator Q in the Heisenberg representation is done by knowing the time evolution operator U. And when we say we want to see what happened at finite temperature, we are making the trace on the eigenvalues of the, of the Hamiltonian that model the system. Let us introduce the retarded and advanced functions for two operators A at time t and B at time t prima. The retarded and advanced functions are given through the mean value of this commutator, the retarded green function is accompanied by the theta function that takes values different from zero when t is greater than t prime, and uh, the advance which takes uh, values different from zero when t prime is greater than t. And by the mean value, we understand the trace of the operator on the states of the Hamiltonian that model the system. Uh, here, I make use of the metric operator when necessary. It can be shown that the equation of motion for the green function is given by this equation that is here. And we also can define the so-called correlated functions. It is clear that the retarding advanced green function are linear combination of the correlated function plus the theta function. If we introduce the spectral density, 
defined as the transform of the correlated functions. It can be written in terms of the eigenvalues of the basis, and this is a spectral representation, so that the retarded advance transform of the gain function can be given in terms of this uh, spectral density function. Okay, this is surely uh, most of you are uh, familiar with this. Now, why I use the double gain function? Because I want to address this problem. Suppose we have a Hamiltonian H which at time be lower than T0 is given by Hamiltonian H0. And we know the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian, so we can construct the density matrix for this Hamiltonian and the partition function for this Hamiltonian. And then at T greater than, than T0, we switch on a time-dependent interaction. In the Heisenberg representation, the density matrix obeys this equation, and the initial condition we shall put is that at t, when t goes to t0, the density matrix is given by this uh, expression. If we approximate or we write rho in terms of rho zero and a correction, in the, in the linear approximation, the equation takes this simple form. And so that from it, we can uh, uh, write formally this correction in terms of this integral. And if we may use of the definition of the double gain function, the mean value of an operator O, given by the trace of O with the density matrix, is given by the trace on the initial, uh, in the initial condition, plus this term that includes the retarded uh, Green function of the operator O and H. Here is a misprint, here should be T. And again, when I talk about uh, then, uh, operators that dependent on T, I assume I knew the evolution operator and Q de T is basically this. Well, uh, as we shall work, in a non-PT non symmetric case also, uh, we shall need in some of the examples the, to work in the rigid Hilbert space, basically because the eigen function of the Hamiltonian does not, does not belong to the usual Hilbert space, but we have to construct the Gelfand triplet. We have a subspace dense in H, and the eigen function now will live in the anti dual space of it. Well, let us briefly review the time evolution. Uh, we shall call P ascent to the eigen functions of the Hamiltonian H. Uh, when I write eight times, I mean that. Uh, this may belong to the to the rigid Hilbert space when necessary. And phi overline the function of the adjoint operator of H. And as we are dealing with uh, time-dependent Hamiltonians, as Andreas and Thomas Fritz have proved in 1918. The self operator H associated to capital H is not only is not given by usual similarity transformation, but we have to add an additional term 
because the Dyson operator depends in generally on T. So if we take this into account, the relation between the adjoint Hamiltonian of, H, of capital H is given in this way, and S is uh, the density, the metric operator. Nevertheless, even when the operator, the Dyson operator depends on T, on T we can relate it, uh, the eigenfunctions of capital H with the eigenfunction of H, and also the eigenfunction of the adjoint of capital H with the eigenfunction of H through these simple relations, at least in form. Well, then uh, if I want to say how does a fan evolves, I have to construct the explicitly the evolution operator U, which obeys the this relation. Consequently, if I want to write the time evolution of phi ascent, this will be the the dependence on the Dyson map I have here plus the form that takes phi. So I will introduce a new evolution operator U ascent associated to capital H and a new operator evolution operator overlined associated to the joint of capital H. It can be proved that the equation for these operators can be put in this form, basically similar to, to this. And we, all, uh, we already have the, the initial condition that at time t0, the evolution operators are the identity operator. Now, if I use the Heisenberg representation, the density matrix obeys this expression and it is the solution of this equation of motion with the condition that, that rho zero is rho evaluated at t zero. The mean value of an operator rho is given then by the trace on the states of H, the trace of rho with the operator over the eigenstates of H. I can introduce, or we introduce, the, the density matrix rho ascent given by this expression, where rho ascent at T0 is simply this. And it can be proved that with this way of writing rho, it obeys the equation for a Hamiltonian H, for the Hamiltonian H, H capital H. Furthermore, if an, we write an operator on Px related to a self function operator O through this Dyson, particular Dyson map, we end up that the trace of O on the states of the eigenstates of capital H can be matched to the trace of the self function operator O on the states of H. Well, uh, well here is for well, the interested ones uh, the, the proof. And then I shall address the problem of the, of the sons of Hamiltonian with a time with a perturbative to which we have had a perturbative interaction time. Well, the sons of Hamiltonian takes this form. 
and it can be proved that we can construct a Dyson map this form and through this Dyson map we get we can construct similar transformation of the Hamiltonian that is very similar to the to the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian where the effective mass can be put in terms of the parameters of the model and the frequency now is given by the square root of this, uh, this expression. So in terms of bit beta and alpha, we omega square can be positive or negative and the mass, effective mass can be positive or negative, which shall work in the region of positive mass. Well, this is a brief of the results of the regions in terms of beta and alpha. And now let us take the first example. Let us assume that the perturbative interaction is given by a periodic potential with this exponential form where epsilon is greater than zero so that as t tends to minus to minus infinity it goes to zero it goes to zero that is we switch on adiabatically the interaction and as we have choose that the that h depends on x square, the Dyson map is independent of t. So, uh, and it is the same that we have before. So we end up with this uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, if we apply the, the previous approach, that is to compute this mean value, we have to compute h of t as a function of t and b. And we end up with this simple result, where e is the result of the integration between minus infinity and t. Uh, to see how does it work or how good is this approach? This is a very simple example, so I can make the, I can compute the exact solution. For doing so, this is the usual uh, technique of quantum mechanic course. So I write u as the evolution operator associated to each zero and I introduce the interaction the evolution operator u, it obeys this equation, and after San algebra, it can be seen that this term behaves in this way with these uh, exponential forms. So now I can compute rho by writing rho as h zero writing rho through this expression and take into account that rho zero is the density matrix at the equilibrium at the time t zero. In this case, t zero is minus infinity. Uh, so when I do so, the trace is this simple result. And now the is that the set solution of this uh, mean value are given by this expression, where set at zero, set at plus, set at minus are given in terms of gamma and gamma zero, and this uh, written as the square root of the difference of gamma zero quadrado minus gamma quadrado. Uh, when we plot the results, the solid line correspond to a result, the dashed line correspond to approximate ones. And 
uh, this is valid when the perturbation B is small compared to square uh, to omega square because we have work in the linear approximation. Nevertheless, in this approximation, the results are pretty good. Uh, as a function of the temperature for, for each T, we obtain also a periodic solution for X square and P square as shown for two values of B, B.16, B.26. Well, let us now work a more involved problem that is we take the interaction term to be proportional to x to an to an anti commutator of x and p and now clearly the Dyson map is not uh, in time independent moreover the Dyson map we have choose has this form is similar to the to the previous one but now here we introduce a time dependent factor if we choose b uh, at this potential and we apply this mapping this hamiltonian is associated to this Hamiltonian, this adjoint Hamiltonian, which is uh, similar to the one I have treated in the previous example. Now we have put a theta function so that the, the, we switch on the, the interaction at the finite time T0. By computing the same uh, mean values and commutators, we end up with an expansion of this form, the expression of this form for x squared and t squared, where now the integral is given between t0 and t, and it has this form. Uh, as seen before, we also have a periodic behavior in function of t at different temperatures. Now as, the, as we have switched on the interaction at a given t0, we have a, a different periodical pattern, but the pattern still is periodical. Well, let us now go to the non-PT symmetry phase. In the non-PT symmetry phase, the Hamiltonian, the, Hamil the Swanson Hamiltonian can be uh, written or we can, we can introduce this, uh, here is in a sprint, uh, this uh, Dyson map and it can be seen that is similar to Hamiltonian H0, which is the inverted Hamiltonian. And to solve this problem, we introduce new operators U and B, even in terms of X and P by this expression, so that the inverted Hamiltonian can be put in this form, the function and eigenvalues are given by the eigenvalue uh, takes positive imaginary parts for the functions that are the eigenfunction that I, I call P plus and negative imaginary part for the eigenvalues I call P minus. With this set of eigenfunctions, sorry, we can construct B orthogonal products or we can introduce a metric S so that when I take the mean value, I mean, we mean the mean value with respect to this metric X. 
uh, we can propose that the general representation of age now is given by the portion of eigenstates, uh, the portion of eigen, with eigenvalues, imaginary eigenvalues positive, and the portion with machine with eigenvalues with imaginary negative values. Now, when we do so, H plus is not cell adjoint, H minus is not cell adjoint, so that the self, uh, the adjoint of H plus is H minus. Now, when we look at the a temporal evolution operator acting on these functions, we have this uh, following. When we add on states on phi plus, the result is an exponential decay for t greater than zero. And we, when we add with the evolution operator on p minus, this is an exponential, this is exponentially decay state if t is less than zero. So if we think that we have an arrow in time uh, and we want to obtain an irreversible quantum mechanics formalism, we have to choose where we work. Uh, if we assume that at we are working at t greater than zero, the operator, the evolution operator that will define on phi plus, on the function of phi plus. If we work at t less than zero, the operator is will define on t minus. Here is a misprint. So, how we uh, work the now we have a Hamiltonian that has complex pair conjugates eigenstates. So if I forget about the time arrow, I may say, okay, the, the, the density matrix is given this form and the partition function is as always the trace on the eigenvalues on the eigenvectors of H. Uh, the difference here is we have a metric, but nevertheless, this is a real quantity that takes this form. But when we remember that we want to, to, uh, to work for t greater than zero, we shall we have to trace over the anti-resonant states. In doing so, we end up with a partition function, which is not real, but complex. Now, if I do not know anything about digit Hilbert space, I may say, well, the density matrix in coordinate space for a Hamiltonian that is of the form of the inverted one, obeys this equation. In solving this equation, the solution can be put in this form and the partition function is given by the integral of rho on x, 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 x beta over x, between minus infinity plus infinity. And this gives us, when we take omega equal to the positive imaginary solution, this gives us the same result for the partition function. Well, what are the implications of this partition function? Well, to my knowledge, to my knowledge uh, there are attempts to write the entropy of systems, uh, uh, modeled by 
Hamiltonian with complex pair spectrum, uh, conjugate spectrum. They are from Bonn and Gadella, basically. But I, to my knowledge, there are no more, not too much in, on this topic. But what it is interesting is that if I if we compute the the free energy and the entropy and in the usual way way from the partition function, they takes they has a complex pair where an, an imaginary part. But the internal energy is real. So perhaps we can say that the internal energy of this system is an observable. The associated heat capacity, the, that is the derivative of the internal energy of T, is also real. And we can define a, a mean value of the of particles as a function of T in this way, and this is also real. But now comes the interesting thing. The difference between, basically, between the harmonic oscillator and the inverted oscillator is that instead of a cotangent, we have in the harmonic oscillator an hyperbolic cotangent, an hyperbic, hyperbolic cotangent. What are the consequences of this cotangent? Well, I have to define a mean temper, a lower temperature. So we have a lower bond to the temperature so that this quantity being positive and I see no divergences in U and in C. Up, up to my knowledge, I have found some, some discussion on this issue saying that below this temperature, the, the system is chaotic. But I am not uh, familiar with chaotic systems, so I will share work in the safe zone. Uh, if I take omega equal to P, the, the lower temperature should be two. And for temperatures up okay. greater than two, this is the, the internal energy. This is the heat capacity that takes the internal energy goes almost linear at high temperatures, and the heat capacity again is constant at high temperatures. And uh, this is the mean value of particles of most of the system. Now, what happens when I want to add a, a, a time dependent perturbative term? To this, uh, to this, to this interaction. Well, the first things I would like to work with a full uh, density matrix and then trace off, as before, the anti-resonant states. But to do so, the first contribution is to second order. And so I will work to second order in the density matrix. I will shall trace off the resonant anti resonance sector, and I shall I will shall take the mean value of the operator as the trace of the density matrix, the reduced density matrix with A. Well, to second order, we have this expression. And after some cover some 
algebra, we end up with this expression for the density matrix, reduce density matrix, the contribution to second order, and independent of the form of this factor that depends on T and B that I shall give in the next slide, I we shall stress that as H plus is not at self adjunct the time evolution, the resulting time evolution is given with H plus and the adjoint of X plus on the other side. Well, the, this function can be expressed in terms of two integrals and this other function that are given here. And if I compute the mean value of particles that is in this representation is the mean value of the operator of the anti-commutator of U with B, the operators U and B that I introduced in the first slides, the mean value takes this form. Well, here is a picture or representation as how does this mean value uh, behave as B goes from zero to 0 0.1. What is clear from this uh, slide is that at large temperature, the, the, the oscillatory behavior in T is washed out. Um, the real, this is the real part of N and the imaginary part of n near t equal near t equal two there is a contribution not zero for the imaginary part of n this uh, this may be because or we are Take, we are working at second order and perhaps in higher order these contributions disappear or perhaps we should work to higher order or try to solve this exactly and look if there is a real contribution and a complex contribution to the to mean, mean value which I guess we one can associate to some laws in the system. But to me, this is an open question. Uh, if one compare this with what happened with the normal, the usual harmonic oscillator, clearly the behavior is different. So, uh, my conclusion is that uh, there is still open questions in the no petty symmetry phase when we talk of a uh, finite temperature uh, and this should be uh, a way to, to look at thermodynamics out of equilibrium. And in this respect, I found that the double time thermodynamic green function is a suitable way of dealing with these problems. Well, this work, we shall have not yet finished. There is not yet sent to publication, but I think next, next week we, we shall finish the, the, the work the writing work. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank, thank you. you. Comments, questions? 
I have um, a question and a comment on um, your first and second example. Um, when you perturb the Swanson model, you're perturbing first with an uh, X square term with a time dependent coefficient. And in the second example, you perturb with an XP PX term also with a um, time dependent coefficient. So these kind of terms, they already appear in the Swanson model and they are exact solutions when one takes the Swanson model and makes all coefficients time dependent. So okay. one should be able to compare just by keeping two of them or three constant and just the one which corresponds to the perturbation identified with that time dependent term. Okay. I think you, you, you see my point. Um, there's yes, an exact yes. solution. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we shall look at it and we let you know. Okay. Happens. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the comment. My other question is when you say the broken regime, you are always referring to the time independent Hamiltonian. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, that defines the broken regime. Whereas the full time dependent one, I mean, there it's not clear is it broken or is it unbroken, right? Okay. I understand. And I understand. what what we observe in the exact case is, um, and that I think relates to what you're doing, that in the time dependent systems, when your metric is time dependent, really, you know, there is no distinction really to go from uh, the broken regime um, to the PT regime. You can you can smoothly go over the exceptional point doesn't really play any more a role and doesn't distinguish between phases. Okay, I shall look. I think that's also what, what you're doing because um, yeah, well, here, here on this slide, yeah. Yes. You, you well, it's not time dependent actually this metric. Um, yeah. No, but we can work it on, okay. It would be nice. Okay. But one can take the metric and just go from one regime to the other and nothing particular happens. Usually it breaks down, yeah? Okay. But when it's time dependent, this doesn't happen. Okay. What we have done here is to think that the perturbation is small so that it doesn't change too much the, the physics of the system. Yeah. But it is a good question and it would be worse to look at it. One could possibly do it exactly. Uh, yes. yes. Rather yes. than perturbatively. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, yes, it would be interesting. To my knowledge, there is no much uh, things on temperature, on system mm, temperature. Yeah. When the system is modeled by non emission Hamilton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, on this I agree. Hmm. And uh, what I found interesting reading some some recent works that the inverted harmonic oscillator wall uh, there is uh, this year in different works I different people uh, make analogies between the uh, inverted harmonic oscillator and what happens in the in the horizontal in the horizon of a black hole and they related the Hawking radiation with the physics of inverted harmonic oscillator mm -hmm. but about black holes I, I am not expert <laughs> who, who are these people uh, I can uh, send you the reference mm. uh, there are a recent terrace of physics and a quantum advanced work of March, I think. Mm -hmm. But I can send you the reference. Okay. Thank you. Any, any more comments, questions? No. 
No one. Okay. Then um, let's uh, thank Marta again. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share this work. Okay.